Hello everyone and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pi 5 running Ubuntu 23.10. Ubuntu announced a few days ago that you're going to have the latest version of their software available on the Pi 5 for the Pi 5 launch. But as a matter of fact, it's available right now. Since I have the Pi 5 here in the workshop, let's test it out. Okay, so we switched to screen capture. We are in Raspberry Pi OS right now. So this is Debian 12 Bookworm. Uh, recently released by Raspberry Pi, but we have something else to test out today, which is Ubuntu 23.10. I'm here on our Pi Locator. If you're looking for a Pi 5, head out to rpilocator.com and go to the Pi 5 pre-order resource. Um, I have some information here for um, not only just pre-orders, but if you're going to be looking for in-stock items coming October 23rd, that's when we expect the Pi 5 to hit stores. Go, go check it out. So the easiest way to get Ubuntu 23.10 or your Raspberry Pi 5 is to use Imager. Imager is available on Linux, Windows, and Mac. I'm on Linux right now, and Raspberry Pi OS comes with the Imager pre-installed. So if you go to Imager, choose OS, uh, General Purpose, Ubuntu 23.10. You can see it's available for the 4, the 400, and the Pi 5. Uh, with models with four gigabytes or more. Uh, the four, you know, has models with one, two, four, and eight gigabytes, but the five so far only has uh, four and eight gigabytes. The Pi 5 that I have here in my workbench is uh, eight gigabytes, so let's go over that. Choose storage, I'm gonna choose the Kingston, which is the SSD that I have plugged into USB 3.0, and I'm gonna choose right. Yes. Put in my password and we're cooking. It's gonna take a little while, so I'll fast forward this for a little bit. Okay, it's verifying now, so less staff. We should be good to go pretty soon. All right, we're good to go. Let's shut this down and next time we load it, it's going to be running Ubuntu 23.10. So Ubuntu is loading up right now. This is the first time running Ubuntu. I just flashed it to my SSD, so. Uh, it's going to have me go through the setup steps, the initial steps. You know, I have to enter your account, password, and all that. Uh, the usual Ubuntu setup. So English, uh, I usually use US International with dead keys, this one. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that the fan on the active cooler on the Raspberry Pi it's full blast right now, so we'll see once we finish the setup if it's still going to be going full blast. But it doesn't look like it's being uh, PWM'd right now. It's just 100%. Alright, my Wi-Fi password. Yep, connect. All right, that was pretty quick. Yes, Chicago is the right time zone. All right, so my name, again, this is all usual Ubuntu setup. Computer name, I'm gonna call Pi 5 Ubuntu. Uh, username, I'm gonna leave it as Sandre, password. A weak password I've got here, but it's okay. It's just in my network. Continue. So it's going to do its thing for a little while. So I'll speed it up a little bit right now. All right, and we're in. Well, not yet. Uh, enter my password. Uh, 
Okay, now we're in, and the fan is still going at 100%. Uh, I'm gonna skip my account creation. I don't want to send any info. Um, nope, no location service is needed. I am done. All right, I'm gonna have to reboot in a second just to see if the fan does something different, but yeah, it's still going at 100%. I mean, this would be super annoying sitting on your desk. Uh, other than that, it seems really responsive. I mean, if you use Raspberry Pi OS, you know that it, it's really good right now, especially with Bookworm, but this is so much better. Um, just initial impressions. I uh, haven't used it very long, but it, it seems super, super snappy. Let's open Firefox. Looks like that's the default web browser here. Yeah, definitely loading a little faster than Raspberry Pi OS. Um, one thing I'm going to check out is installing KiCad. I always have a KiCad installed on my Raspberry Pi since this is the computer that I would use here on my workbench. And I believe they have a specific install step for Ubuntu. Yes, correct. And it, this is great because it's on 7.0.8, so it's the stable release. This, this is the newest version of KiCad. Um, Debian, the packages are not really updated very often. What I mean by that is that the new versions, uh, of course, the security updates and critical updates are all updated, but uh, a new version of a software is not updated once um, Debian version is released. Uh, sometimes you can get through backports, but anyway, it's uh, another video for that. And for Ubuntu, I have the latest package right here. Uh, let's try installing that. Open terminal. Password. Yep, I want to do that. And we'll see how long it takes. Installing KiCad usually takes a while. It's a pretty large package, lots of data. It has a lot of 3D elements. Uh, so we'll see how long it takes. So let's do an update. And sudo install KiCad. Yes. All right. I'm probably going to speed through this part because it might take a little while. All right. Yeah, that's taking a little while. Like I said, it's a pretty large package. So we're 40% right now. We'll see how long it takes. All right. It looks like it is done. Let's check it out. Okay. Yeah. looks like it's all there. Yep, just do its thing. All right, that, that was super quick. Um, just loading the initial screen, even without loading a PCB, just seems so much faster. I have to map my NAS drive that lives on a banana pie, and I'll, I'll come back once I have that figured out. Okay, we're back on the desktop here, and I have KiCad installed. Uh, let's fire it up. Yep, KiCad. It's super quick. I keep getting this message if I wanted to update my plugins in startup. I've clicked yes a couple times. This is not the first time that I'm launching KiCad and it keeps asking me for that. It does not do that on my Windows computer, so I'm not sure. I was able to map my drives and I have my Banana Pi NAS uh, attached here and I'm loading these files directly from my NAS. Uh, opening a PCB board. Uh, it, this is not a very complex board, but this is super quick. This is so much better than Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm. Like, it, this is so smooth. Look at this. Like, it, this is pre-compatible uh, pre with my Windows laptop. It's a pre pretty beefy laptop, and, it, it, and the KiCad is pretty intensive. Uh, software, uh, not, you know, like editing video or anything like that, but it has a lot of graphical features and has to draw a lot of stuff on your screen. Looks like there's a small mistake there that I have to fix. 
Uh, but yeah, this is pretty awesome. Uh, let's check 3D view. Uh, so Alt 3. Oh, wow. Okay, that was quick. Um, that is pretty impressive. Uh, on the Raspberry Pi OS is much slower. Let's say ray tracing. Okay, so that that is pretty good. It, this is probably as fast as my laptop. Um, this is pretty amazing. I've been using the Raspberry Pi 5 here in my workbench. I check my board files as I am assembling them. I make small tweaks like things that I find and I know that I have to make small changes. I still use my Windows laptop to do most of the design, um, but it's just so convenient to have KiCad available here on my workbench. Uh, this is pretty amazing. Uh, let's see what else we can we can run here. And just the experience, just running things is so great. Um, let's go to Firefox. All right, pretty standard Firefox. Open up pretty quickly. Uh, let's go to YouTube. Took a second to load. Definitely not a desktop experience when you're using YouTube. YouTube is pretty heavy website, has a lot of JavaScript running in the background, a lot of things loading, a lot of images. So it takes a while and you can see that on the Pi 5, it is a little slower than my, my usual desktop or laptop. But this seems on par with um, Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, let's go to Vic, uh, Vic, look funny. All right, that second page is loaded a lot quicker. Okay, connect it right away. I didn't get the spinning wheel, so that's good. Stats for nerds, uh, nope. Okay, so it's dropping a few frames. Not, oh, okay, yeah, now it's dropping a lot of frames. Okay, uh, and we are on 720p. Okay, if I switch to 1080, I'm sure it's gonna be even worse. Yeah, it's just dropping frames all over the place. And this is 60 FPS. I wonder if I switch to 30 FPS, if it's any any different. Uh, it doesn't look jittery. It, it's not too bad, but it, it's dropping a lot of frames, as you can see right now. All right, so usable, but not great. And Ubuntu comes with their user stuff. They have LibreOffice, Writer. I think they have the whole suite. So LibreOffice. Yeah, they have the whole suite installed, uh, which is pretty nice. And it just how responsive the search is. It's pretty crazy. Um, just typing. And it, it, I have not seen a desktop experience this good on a Raspberry Pi before. Of course, this is the Raspberry Pi 5, so it's a lot faster than anything that has existed before, but it, it's pretty impressive. Uh, the fan is still bugging me. It's still blowing at 100%. I've tried rebooting. Uh, it doesn't look like it, it makes a difference. I don't think that they have implemented uh, PWME, the fan on Ubuntu. I am actually about to disconnect the wires from the active cooler fan because it's so loud and I, I'm sure you guys are hearing it through the microphone right now. It, it's pretty annoying. So that would be the only downside from using uh, Ubuntu on your Pi 5. All right, let's see how LibreOffice, how responsive it is. Okay, that, that was pretty speedy. Um, let's see, Calc, so that's their version of Excel. Wow, okay, that was fast. Um, that is pretty impressive. And the desktop optimization is pretty cool. Um, wow, yeah, um, let's go to the App Center. What else should I install? 
I wonder, I wonder if there are any settings in uh, for Raspberry Pi specific settings. I know that in the past they have had a section that was called Raspberry Pi. I don't see one here. Okay. All right. So that is it for this one. Uh, pretty impressive user experience on Ubuntu 2310. I, I have to say I, I'm impressed. I think that's it for this one. I will talk to you guys later.